Man, I love playing this game. Too bad the N64 controller sucks. Oh well, what are we gonna do? Let's go put it in the console. Boom. All right. Welcome to the Generational Gamer. Man, this Conquer game is fun. Unfortunately, this controller is a real piece of crap. Now, I love Nintendo, but good lord. Come on, Conquer, move! 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 I don't want to sound too angry there. If only there was a better solution. Let me check the web. Ooh, there is a product to fix this very issue. We are now looking at the RafNetTech.com website, and we are going to go into the N64 controller to GameCube adapter. We're going to start by looking at the features and how to order and all that other good stuff. So there's the prices, there's where it ships from, and now we're going to check out the compatibility list. And there's a large number of things that are in fact compatible. It lists the WaveBird as being somewhat compatible. I've had no issues with mine. I have tried this controller with games that use an internal battery and games that do not use an internal battery. I am very, very impressed with this thing. Wow, that was prompt. Look what arrived. Now this thing looks neat. What the heck do I do with this? Okay, that obviously goes in the N64, and that looks like it goes to the GameCube. Alrighty, let's try this bad boy out. Alright, look at the drastic difference between these two controllers. Let's see, comfortable? Uncomfortable. Weird design? Well, still somewhat of a weird design. I never knew what Nintendo was thinking when it came to this button layout. So, what the heck do I do with this? Hmm. I, have you, has anybody ever seen a game that uses this this feature right here? I imagine if you had Virtual On on here, but Sega was still making consoles back then. But yeah, I can't imagine. This, Mortal Kombat, that was pretty much it. Maybe a Street Fighter game if there ever was one for the N64. I don't think there was. But then the vast majority of games played like this. And this joystick sucks. Plastic rubbing on plastic, from my understanding. You see buttons, mostly used for directional. Every few games, Mario Kart uses it for something other than that. Turok is a shooting game, and that uses it for your motion, but you can adjust all that. And then, of course, you've just got your regular controls. And it is a literal map. So, if you're using R, well, then it's the R button. If you're using the L button? It's the L button. What about the Z that uses the L button for so many games on the N64? Well, that is mapped to the Z button. Now, that sounds pretty terrible, but Raffinet was smart, and they allowed you to map it. These two buttons generally do nothing, so let's just say for Mario Kart, which you have to push C down in order to be able to use your power up. Well, that is a huge pain in the butt with this controller, so I mapped it to this. You got some games that use this in different directions to symbolize a different button. Well, on the N64 pad, that's not a problem. It's literally a button. Well, on this one, you, you can map those. So Star Fox, if you want this one, well, maybe this button will do. If you want it for up, maybe this button will do. You can map it because these two do absolutely nothing on the GameCube. Well, what about the Z? Well, the Z is typically mapped to the L in N64 games. Well, now you've got the Z that's free. And there's an online site that on RafNet that tells you exactly how to do this. Now, it's a little cumbersome at times. Basically, when you have this thing connected, you hold down the start button. This thing will illuminate, and at that point, it's in programming mode. You hold down the R button, and then if you saved any of your settings, you just push in the direction you care about. And then it's set for that game. It does one of four. So it's up, down, right, and left. There's no Konami code here. That being said, it works a whole lot better. You can also inverse the analog sticks, which is so nice. 
but it is very complicated. The There is a USB adapter for this thing. I don't have it. I probably will get it because I am more of a computer nerd than trying to figure this part out, but it does does work. So once you get into programming mode... And here's the generator. You can see what we've got here. You get a choice for every single button that's on that GameCube controller. And basically you select what you want the GameCube controller to do in reference to the N64 controller. Then click generate, and at that point you will have the code that you need to press. So mine is B-A-Z-X-L, and then press the start. Again, hold it, hold start, and then you start entering in your, your key presses per the website based on the generator. All right, hit start. All right, now we're programmed. Now we can play. Let's go. And it is so much nicer. I can't recommend this thing enough. Um, I highly encourage anybody to check out RafNet. The controls are so much better than the N64 control. Now this is one of my early ones. I got this thing when it first came out. Oh, and you know what? Those of you not familiar with this, because most Nintendo games actually use an internal RAM battery, this little controller pack is actually built into one of these. So even if the, this was at one point required for certain games, plug into the N64 controller and obviously not compatible with one of these, this provides you that option. They've got three different variations. They've got version 1, 2, and 3. This is version 3. I've noticed zero latency in these old games, and using a GameCube controller is so much more comfortable than using the N64 controller. I don't know if it's just because my hands are big and my hand rubs against this prong on the N64 controller, but I am just not comfortable using this. Maybe when I was a teenager, I thought this thing was a whole lot cooler than it really was. But I have no nostalgia for the N64 controller. I do have nostalgia for some of their games, but I'm all about comfort now because I just want to play. I don't want to have to deal with this. I mean, it's my knuckle is literally rubbing against this, and if I'm moving at, over time, I mean, it doesn't hurt by any stretch of the imagination, but over time, I imagine there'd be some kind of fatigue or at least some kind of discomfort. So, yes, put that aside. Hook this up. It will work on the WaveBird. Some games are supposedly incompatible. I've had no issues with it. Highly encourage this thing.